Hey everybody, it is me. It's your old buddy Steve Simonson and I'm jumping on for a quick podcast today because uh, not only is the sky falling, but Amazon is now putting a hold or banning incoming FBA shipments for Amazon Marketplace sellers for non-essential items. So what does that mean to us? Why are we talking about it? Why uh, are we surprised by this? All of these questions I'm going to try to answer today. Uh, but you're going to want to go to today's show page so that you can grab by any links and show notes at awesomers.com slash 176. Now, I have to tell you that uh, it was a kind of a surprise announcement when I woke up. Um, we saw emails and we saw lots of posts on Facebook and various groups about this idea that Amazon essentially has said, hey, we've got an issue. And that issue is we can't accept non-essential items coming into the warehouse right now. We need to prioritize our capabilities uh, towards essential items. So let's take a let's fly up to that thirty thousand foot view and talk about why this is required and why I think Amazon's being reasonable. Of course, there's a lot of us that this will uh, negatively impact. Right, if we're out of stock or we're going to run out of stock, uh, and I'll talk about those ramifications here in a minute. But let's talk about, from a very, I don't know, practical point of view, why this is not Amazon being jerky, but why they're probably doing the right thing and a, and a necessary thing, more importantly. And as you guys know, I always try to have kind of a, an even keel when it comes to Amazon. As I routinely say, you know, 49% of the time I love them, 49% of the time I hate them, and that 2% kind of just goes back and forth between the, the love and the hate. Uh, for better or worse, that's just kind of the way I, I picture it. But this one, I don't, I don't fault them for because if you look at, uh, and we don't see the data, but if you just look at it from a logical perspective, whether it's Walmart or Amazon, Target, uh, Sainsbury, any of the stores around the world that are dealing with this thing, uh, and I'm talking about the coronavirus situation that's happening you know, here uh, in the Western world, very rapid expansion that everybody's stocking up on all these essential items. Now, I still don't get the toilet paper uh, hoarding that's happening, but, uh, you know, say la vie, bidet sales are through the roof. So when you think about everybody kind of bringing on required things, like I went and I got some, some canned stuff at Costco the other day. I got some other non-perishables, you know, that, that are edible. They're going to be things that we have. And I'm not planning on eating them immediately. It's just kind of if there's a, a short-term uh, issue getting groceries, I'm, I don't want my family to go hungry. And I suspect I'm not the only one. I think some people are taking it to extremes. But I think everybody who didn't already have a little bit of food storage is probably prudently stocking up. Now, this, this could go beyond food. It could go into things like temperature gauges or other health-related things. Uh, it could go into other kind of day-to-day -day essential items, medications or you know, I don't know everything, but the point is there are a series of essential things that we need in our life and things that are maybe not as essential. And so Amazon has made a pragmatic decision to say, you know what, we've got a massive capacity problem, right? All of the inbound shipments that are coming in, we really need to triple down on the, the stock, both from a logistic capability, literally the number of incoming slots that they have, as well as the cubic space capabilities. So in my opinion, uh, and I'm not a medical expert, but I'm a reasonably uh, capable supply chain uh, expert, I suppose, this is not a crazy thing. So what does this mean? So this, uh, if you're right now trying to restock your stuff, you could have a problem. And April 5th, 2020 is the, the date that Amazon is pushing stuff out to. Now, could that change? Could it go earlier? Maybe. Could it go later? Maybe. I, I don't know. But I think... Nobody knows. That's, that's the fundamental point. We don't have a sense of how long this could go or how maybe this needs to be repeated. So maybe there's some opening around April 5th, but it needs to be repeated. And the question is, in this world of chaos that's kind of happening right now, what can you do if you are trying to put product as a, as a marketplace seller into Amazon in the FBA centers? And I have a couple bits of advice for you. One, uh, if you already have shipments, be sure that you check those shipments. Uh, some of those shipments are being delayed. Some may be uh, canceled. I'm not speaking for Amazon or your individual shipment. Go check it and figure out the situation. If you have product that's 
trying to leave and, and go to Amazon, for example, from China or from anywhere, from any of your supply, and you don't have a place to put that, but you need to move it so that it's quickly here, I would recommend using a 3PL. Now, I've used 3PLs in various forms, and we've used our own warehousing in various forms, in addition to FBA for many, many years, and I've talked about this for many, many years as well, we think of a 3PL as a staging warehouse. So we'll send bulk shipments, let's say they originate in, in China or Vietnam or Portugal or wherever, we'll send that bulk shipment to staging warehouses in the various countries we'll do business in. And let's just use America for the, the time being. So we'll start in China and go, hey, we've got a bulk shipment, let's ship some to America to a 3PL facility there and they can hold that inventory what we call staging uh, a staging warehouse and they'll store it there and then they'll sell send bulk shipments in on a relatively frequent basis but instead of us having so much inventory at amazon when it's not needed uh we are more pragmatic about you know trickling that in now we we bulk up during prime day or during christmas or the holidays but we want to be relatively lean where we can now I have uh, lots of friends and lots of, they're like, hey, the more inventory, the better. And that way you can withstand those, those giant curves that happen at Amazon from time to time. And the, to be honest with you, sometimes that does happen. But in our products in general, we, we don't see these giant um, crazy bell curve situations. Uh, I'll give you an example from the past where this was not Amazon related, but it was a, a, a world changing event related. So. Uh, I, I shared this the other day, but it'll be redundant to some of you. But uh, on September 11th, we had a company called Corner Hardware. And uh, after the, um, the terrorist attacks happened, we noticed that one of our SKUs on Corner Hardware just was selling like crazy. And we checked it out, and it was uh, American flags. And we it was a drop shipping scenario back in 2001. We were fully integrated with the supplier EDI. So everything they had in stock was showing. And the, the SKU blew up, did the bell curve, and then was out of stock. And, of course, we couldn't get any more, and nobody could. As it turns out, by the way, CNN and other media outlets were actually showing people that they could go onto Corner Hardware and grab uh, flags at that time. So it really, you know, it was a big bell curve. And there's no way we could have ever stocked enough to withstand that. No way we could ever predict that. And, you know, inventory is already an imperfect science. These kind of crazy events are even more uh, anomaly, anomalies, more anomalistic. I, I don't know. I'm making up words, but they're they're so far out of the normal um, equation. You just can't do math for every event, and I also can't do math to have stock in the inventory forever. Uh, if you have a lot of stock and a lot of inventory, having stock sitting around for a year is a terrible use of cash. Um, it's also not ideal when it comes to. Uh, there, there's different products that, that this works better for, but I don't, I'm not a big fan of having inventory that doesn't turn. That's a fundamental financial decision I make. I don't think it's practical for most companies to have a year's worth of inventory in stock. But whatever you do have, let's say you, you're turning uh, once a month, twice a month, once a quarter, whatever it is, I still like having that inventory staged in a third-party warehouse. When you get big enough, you can do your own warehouse, but I think 3PLs make sense so that you can feed it into Amazon. You can even feed into other um, sales channels that are on the wholesale, and you can even do drop shipping if you need to for you know, eBay or for Walmart or, or other sales channels that you have, your own, your own Shopify site, et cetera, uh, or WooCommerce. Pick your poison. The point is you get some flexibility with a 3PL that is sometimes better than the flexibility or the cost structure, at least the cost structure that you get at Amazon. So what's my advice today? Don't freak out. Come, you know, for every problem, there's a solution. So let's you know, kind of uh, go out of freak out mode and into problem solving mode. And my advice there is to go get a 3PL. Now, I, for most people out of the gates, I recommend a company called 3P Logistics. And it's spelled kind of weird. I'm going to put the, the direct link to it on awesomers.com slash 176. But I'm going to spell their name for you because it's kind of a funny spelling. It's 3PLOGIST.com. 
Now, I don't have any affiliate relationship with them. I don't have any financial relationship with them there. I'm a customer. I've been a customer for years. Uh, and they are also an empowering, vetted uh, 3P logistics provider. So go there, let them know you're part of the Empowery family, and you will be treated, I think, very well. And you'll also get excellent pricing and so on and so forth. I, I usually start with this. There are other great options. And as you scale or have a, a need for you know, shipping 1,000 units a day, I would send you to other directions. But in general, this is a great USA starter warehouse. And I think Empowery may have warehousing in Australia. I'm not positive. Possibly UK and Europe. Uh, and you can contact empowery.com slash contact to, to find them, you know, find out their resources. Even though I'm involved and, and certainly support Empowery, I don't know every little detail that they, they have going. And so I recommend you talk to them. So step one is stop freaking out. Step two, find alternatives. Uh, let's assume that this is a short-term problem. Maybe you don't need an alternative. You can just kind of suck up the next uh, two to three weeks of pain. But I sense that there could be future surprises coming. And for that reason, I highly recommend solving this in a systemic way. This way, you'll, you'll be flexible. If this happens again, you still have stock on the ground. When Amazon allows uh, inbound shipments, and by the way, they may change the rules for things originating in China or far away versus things originating in the US that can come in UPS. There are much different slots available for like a, a domestic UPS carrier. They're bringing in you know, truckloads and truckloads all day across many, many centers. So please think about the, the logistical um, touch points that Amazon has to deal with, right? Things coming from overseas, there's a lot more complications, a lot more headaches versus things coming from inside of America via UPS or whatever carrier they happen to be selecting that day. So think about all those things and I think you'll agree that 3PLs just make sense. If you've never used a 3PL and you just rely on Amazon FBA, which by the way is a third party logistics center, just to be clear, I understand not wanting to add a, a level of complexity or complication to your life. And I, I get that. And maybe this is a short term solution for you. One of the best things about a 3PL is it's a variable expense. You don't have to go rent a warehouse. You don't have to you know, sign a lease uh, for some long term, you know, three years, five years, 10 years, depends on the the deal. You don't have to buy a forklift. You don't have to get OSHA training. You don't have to hire employees. You don't have to make sure they show up. You don't have to do any of that. You just make a call and they take care of that and you surge up and down and, and uh, kind of maintain flexibility that you can't get by doing it yourself. I know some of you are like, hey, I'll just do it out of my basement. Hey, no problem. Do what you got to do. I think that's fine short term, especially when we're all self-isolated. It's not like you're going to be out of town on vacation and can't ship. But I, I definitely always look for systemic solutions that don't require me to do the execution of the business. And that's kind of a, a, one of my you know, general philosophies. I want to have systemic solutions where I'm not the bottleneck. And I highly encourage you to follow my example, I suppose. All right, so well, let's summarize. Amazon said, no non-essential inbound shipments until April 5th, 2020. Um, maybe that day changes sooner, maybe it changes later. Maybe it holds that date, but they have to do this again following um, you know, some other surge of requirements. Unfortunately, as we sit here today, today, St. Patrick's Day, March 17th, 2020. Uh, by the way, we have game night, if you happen to be listening to this uh, in time, it's just a few hours away, but game night's happening tonight. If you um, think about this, it could happen again. Uh, the, the problem is going to get worse with this virus stuff, which means more people are going to be trying to buy essential items. And all big companies, Walmart, Target, Amazon, again, you know, pick, your, pick your local company. The big grocers, the big logistics providers, everybody's pulling together to try to make this work. And instead of us whining and crying about it, let's just adapt. Let's be flexible. And let's be part of that solution and not part of the problem. Remember, everybody, we got to flatten that curve. So uh, I'm enjoying self-isolation, frankly, as an introvert. It's not the worst thing in the world. And I get to uh, have conversations with the folks, and I'm not wasting my time on airplanes or traveling or sitting in airports or uh, any of that stuff. But it's having a massively negative effect to the economy. 
right? All the airlines, the Ubers, the hotels, the Vegas, the conventions, uh, there's going to be massive impact. So we don't know what the future holds exactly, but we know we'll come through it. We also know that there's opportunity in, in these states of chaos without being profiteering, price gouging scumbags. And I encourage each of you to look for those opportunities and not to forget that when you know, the world is uh, panic stricken in fear, that that's when we need to start thinking about you know, what does that mean to us and how can we position ourselves to be successful, not just survive, but in fact thrive in the future. So uh, as always, I uh, love entrepreneurs. I appreciate uh, every one of you who are listening. I, I do ask you to, to go leave a review, subscribe, share this thing. Let's make sure that we're, uh, you know, if you believe what I'm saying, if you like what I'm saying, why not share it with somebody uh, who maybe needs a sane piece of um, salient wisdom. Notice how I'm branding that myself. Sane, salient, and uh, wisdom. All of that coming from you here on awesomers.com. Uh, okay, go to awesomers.com slash 176 if you want to see the show notes, a link uh, to the uh, recommended 3PL in the U.S., and we may add some others for the UK or other countries as time goes on. I really do appreciate every single one of you. Stay safe. Please self-isolate. Be part of the part of the solution. And uh, let's flatten that curve again, everybody. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.